Welcome back to Movies Explained, today's film is a drama sci-fi from 2022 titled, Rubicon. In the year 2056, Earth's environment has reached a catastrophic level of degradation. The wealthy reside in air domes, that purify the polluted air outside. Megacorporations have supplanted governments and nations, and their corporate armies resolve conflicts. Efforts to seek sanctuary in space have been unsuccessful. Nibra Corporation controls Rubicon, the final extraterrestrial research base, which is still seeking solutions for the environmental crisis. Nibra dispatches Commander Hanna and Chemist Gavin to assess Rubicon by traveling on the Navicon shuttle. However, locating Rubicon becomes challenging due to an unexpected discrepancy in the coordinates displayed. Hanna must execute a perilous maneuver to dock the shuttle with the station, where the crew suspects the Navicon systems are to blame. They are also displeased to discover Hannah's military background, evident by the chip on her neck. After requesting an explanation for the Navicon's deviation and inspecting the algae farm, Hannah settles into her quarters and contacts her sister Knopf, also a military personnel. Both sisters grew up in poverty and enlisted solely for the income. Regrettably, Knopf's call is cut short due to an urgent matter. Subsequently, the Rubicon crew celebrates the upcoming return of most of its members to Earth, as Hannah and Gavin have arrived to take their places, with three additional personnel en route. Dr. Dimitri, the head researcher, extends a warm welcome and invites them to play cards. However, his son Danilo is antagonistic toward Gavin, who hails from an affluent, don't protected family. Hannah intervenes before the dispute escalates and reviews the crew's report. It reveals a change in the following day's flight path due to an unusual fog cluster over the northern hemisphere, directly above the city housing many eco-activists. The situation has already resulted in numerous casualties, distressing Gavin, a former member of the activist group. Hannah approves the revised flight path and searches for Gavin, who has retreated to the communications room to attempt to access Earth's news reports, with no luck. Reminded that she can communicate directly with Nibra, Hannah suggests making a few calls, but Gavin refuses, as he's skeptical of information originating from the corporations. The following day, everyone departs except for Dimitri, Gavin, and Hannah. Danilo carries a few mother cultures with him at Nibra's behest, and although Dimitri guarantees their survival for the entire journey, he appears uneasy. Later, Hannah contacts her higher-ups to inform them that the delivered mother cultures might have been tampered with. Nibra's executives are no longer concerned, they inform Hannah of a change in plans and instruct her to expedite the preparation of the Icarus plan. As a result, Hannah must quickly learn how Dimitri has developed an algae system capable of providing air and sustenance. However, accomplishing this proves challenging, as Dimitri always seems to be present when Hannah attempts to covertly examine the farm. Later on, they receive a transmission from their team, who are en route but unable to communicate with any Earth-based facilities. Hannah tries making a call herself but receives no response. Suspecting an issue with the optical unit signal transmission, she ventures on a spacewalk to inspect the systems. Before she can complete her task, the crew's panicked voices come through the intercom, exclaiming that they're burning up. The connection is then severed. As Hannah turns around, she sees Earth becoming engulfed in a thick brown haze. After returning to the station, her attempts to reach ground control remain futile. Dimitri mourns his son while Hannah decides to examine her personal tablet, where she discovers a message from Knopf. The message reveals that Earth is in utter turmoil, and all units are being summoned to evacuate citizens to safety bunkers. Two days go by, and Hannah is still unable to get in touch with anyone. Meanwhile, Gavin works to understand the atmosphere, hoping to determine the cause of the mysterious fog. It may be responsible for the navigational difficulties they experienced upon arrival and the change in the crew's course. However, the fog's rapid spread across the planet remains puzzling. Dimitri isolates himself in his room, and when Hannah attempts to bring him food and inquire about the algae, he angrily dismisses her. Later on, Hannah starts building a new radio using spare parts from around the station, but she halts her work when she observes unusual behavior from Gavin. He's frightened by the computer's analysis of Earth's atmosphere and contemplates ending his life. In response, Hannah rushes to assist, and Dimitri emerges from his room to help with the emergency. Together, they perform CPR on Gavin and keep him alive. Once Gavin is unconscious, Dimitri takes him to the infirmary for proper medical care, 
although he's indifferent to Gavin's survival. Hannah confronts Dimitri about his attitude and discloses her knowledge of the advanced algae system, which differs from his reports. Dimitri admits to concealing information, suspecting that she's been spying. As Hannah clarifies that it isn't spying since Nybra funded the project, Dimitri becomes infuriated and claims the project belongs to him and Danilo. When Gavin regains consciousness, he hurries to the computers to share his findings with the others, the toxic fog has killed everyone on Earth. Overwhelmed by the news, Gavin experiences a panic attack, prompting Dimitri to sedate him. Dimitri then reassures Hannah that they are safe within the station, as the algae project was successful, providing them with sufficient air and food for an extended period. Hannah resolves to persist with the radio, confident that survivors must exist within the domes. Following another spacewalk to reposition the antenna, she tests the radio but receives no response. When Gavin awakens, he suggests that the mysterious fog is likely a result of permafrost gases triggering a chain reaction, an event environmentalists had long cautioned against. There may be bunkers with oxygen supplies, but their occupants will eventually perish when resources are depleted. Although Gavin dislikes the prospect of eternal confinement in the spacecraft with only Hannah and Dimitri, Dimitri dissuades him from taking any extreme actions by explaining that the three of them are interconnected. The system, designed for a six-person crew, relies on the crew's CO2 production to convert it back into oxygen, with a minimum requirement of three individuals for effective gas conversion. Gavin agrees to live, and he later forms a bond with Hannah as they discuss their feelings of having squandered their lives in training for a failed mission. Eventually, they share an intimate night together. Weeks later, Hannah notices an unusual brown hue on the algae farm. Dimitri reassures her it's normal, but after she leaves, he retrieves a sample for further examination. The test results trouble him, but he opts not to share the information, instead inviting everyone to a night of gambling and drinking. During this time, Gavin discovers Hannah's past as a Nybra spy, and Dimitri reveals the reason for sending counterfeit samples with Danilo. Months prior, Nybra had altered their contract to make the new algae system exclusive to dome inhabitants. Dimitri was prepared to accept the money, but Danilo vehemently opposed the change, refusing the offer and planning to make the technology publicly accessible. Later on, Hannah secretly vomits and notices the odd brown substance infiltrating the algae. Just then, an astonishing message comes through the communicators, a group of Nybra survivors has successfully established contact. There are 300 individuals remaining in their dome, and their oxygen supply is dwindling, making the algae project essential. Hannah is taken aback by their awareness of the project, indicating that the survivors are CEOs and their families. Concurrently, Dimitri inspects the algae food gel and finds the brown contamination has infiltrated their provisions as well. Hannah and Gavin interrupt his investigation to inform him about the survivors. It appears that gaps in the fog have enabled the domes to transmit their signal, and they should also permit safe passage for a ship. The pair wants to save the refugees, but Dimitri declines, arguing that navigating without nav icon, which the crew took with them, is too dangerous. Gavin contends it's their duty to assist these individuals, but Dimitri remains unmoved, blaming them for Danilo's death. After Gavin storms out of the room in anger, Hannah starts to feel lightheaded, prompting Dimitri to suspect the brown substance might be the cause. He opts to draw a blood sample from Hannah under the pretense of a routine examination, and Hannah seizes the opportunity to try to change his mind once more. Nonetheless, Dimitri emphasizes that these CEOs only look out for themselves. In private, Hannah and Gavin resolve to depart with or without Dimitri, prepared to take the samples forcibly if required. To deter them, Dimitri finally discloses the extent of the brown substance's infiltration and reveals that Hannah is to blame. The crew's urine fuels the algae in the station's nutrient cycle, and their sensitivity to hormones indicates a singular truth, Hannah is pregnant. Hannah denies this possibility, as soldiers are meant to be infertile. Dimitri suggests that her communication chip might be malfunctioning due to prolonged disconnection from the ground base. The algae will survive, but Hannah's unborn child won't if they venture to the surface. This realization alters Gavin's stance, prompting him to remain at the station. Hannah dedicates extensive hours to mastering the station's landing simulations in the hopes of navigating through the narrow gap in the fog. Gavin listens to her concerns about the station being an unsuitable environment for raising a child, ultimately agreeing to accompany her back to Earth. Dimitri, 
unable to survive alone, reluctantly joins them. As the trio prepares for departure, they discover the shuttle's cooling systems have failed, causing the gas tanks to dangerously overheat. Recognizing the imminent explosion, Hannah detaches the shuttle from the station, allowing it to drift safely away before detonating. Now stranded in the station indefinitely, Gavin expresses frustration at Hannah's haste, deciding to send a message to Earth on his own to inform them of their predicament. The CEOs advise Gavin to inquire about Icarus from Hannah, who then reveals that it was her actual assignment. Once she secured the algae specimens, her task was to dismantle the entire laboratory, which could be jettisoned and navigated back to Earth independently. However, it isn't designed for passengers and lacks steering capabilities. Despite the risks, Gavin believes they should attempt it, as saving 300 lives takes precedence over just three, but Hannah remains uncertain. Later, as Gavin rests, Hannah stumbles upon an algae trail on the wall, tracing it to a panel where she uncovers a sabotaged cooling system. Hannah consoles Dimitri, who confesses to the sabotage, but insists his goal was merely to stall, not cause an explosion. Labeling him a coward, Hannah commands him to prepare the Ikara system, something Dimitri is familiar with due to his personal study of the station. However, Dimitri soon realizes that Nybra deliberately assigned Hannah to this mission, aware that a disaster was imminent and yet informing no one. According to Dimitri, the CEOs selfishly secured their own survival in bunkers, unconcerned about the fate of others. He firmly believes that if the CEOs had to distribute the algae amongst the crew, they would refuse to do so. Uncertainty creeps into Hannah's thoughts. As they contact the ground station to inform them of their impending descent with the lab, Hannah requests to speak with a soldier involved in the evacuations. The representative reveals that the bunker could only accommodate the CEOs and their families due to space constraints, leaving the soldiers outside once their duties were completed. This implies that Knopf is dead, and a heartbroken Hannah exits the room to grieve privately. Gavin finds her later and attempts to persuade her to complete the mission, but Hannah, having had a change of heart, declines to rescue individuals who treat others as expendable. The space station is a superior environment for her unborn child compared to the slums, but Gavin will never comprehend this, it is effortless for him to discuss transforming the world when he has his father's wealth to support his ventures. Subsequently, Hannah focuses on extracting the chip from her head and then takes a break to rest. However, her sleep is disrupted by strange sounds. It's Gavin, who has restrained Dimitri and is determined to lower the lab, regardless of Hannah's participation. With no alternative, Hannah cooperates, but at the last moment, she shoves Gavin aside and dismantles the Ikara system. She possesses the knowledge to repair it but refuses to do so, prompting an irate Gavin to depart as Hannah frees Dimitri. Later, Hannah encounters a message from Earth on the computer, which she deletes without listening and then deactivates the communication devices. She proceeds to search for Gavin, but regrettably, she discovers that Gavin has given his life, leaving only his lifeless body behind. After bidding farewell to Gavin, they release his body into the void of space. Realizing they require three individuals to generate oxygen, Hannah is eager to mend Icarus as soon as possible, suspecting Gavin's self-sacrifice was meant to force them to return to Earth for survival. Dimitri is stunned to learn this and suffers a breakdown, as the three-person justification had been a fabrication to prevent Gavin from doing exactly that. Time passes, and Hannah gives birth to a child she names Knopf in honor of her sister. One evening, the youngster stumbles upon the old radio, which spontaneously broadcasts a message from Earth, a group of survivors in the South has finally emerged from the bunkers, extending an invitation for Knopf to join them. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos.